peace is not the absence of trouble, but the presence of Christ. What are we like when trouble comes? Do we go to pieces? Maybe at best we're like that swan gliding down the river, looking so serene, but actually paddling desperately just to keep afloat, though nobody can tell. Usually when we're going through battles or times of trouble, they're happening to us as individuals, or maybe there's a family crisis, but right now, of course, there'll be people going through their individual difficulties, and yet in addition to that, and most unusually, everybody in the world is facing times of trouble and stress as coronavirus sweeps its way around the planet. Peace is not the absence of trouble, it is the presence of Christ. First, I wanted us to look to Jesus to see how he coped with times of stress and trouble in his time on earth. The most obvious answer that probably comes to your mind is that he prayed to his Father, and that's true. Prayer and meditation is very powerful in bringing the peace of God to our hearts and mind. But let's look a bit more closely at where Jesus went when he was tired or troubled. We don't see him rushing round to his friends. We don't see him retreating to his room or even going to the temple. But there are many, many passages in the Bible when he withdraws on his own, not to a temple, but to the countryside. I can certainly relate to this, and indeed I've chosen to come on my own this morning, just out into the garden. I'm sure a lot of others can relate to a solitary walk that becomes a prayer walk and brings God's peace. It must be one of the hardest things, I think, particularly in Spain right now, when you're not allowed to exercise outside of your home. So. Where did Jesus go? Well, several times in all the Gospels, we hear that he withdrew to the Mount of Olives. Oh, listen to that bird. In Luke 21, we hear that each day Jesus was teaching at the temple and each evening he went to spend the night on the Mount of Olives. In Mark chapter 1, we hear that very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. In Matthew 14, Jesus, after hearing the terrible news about John the Baptist having been beheaded, withdrew by boat to a solitary place. After the feeding of the 5,000, he sent his disciples off in a boat and he went up on a mountainside to pray. After the feeding of the 4,000, we read that Jesus got into a boat on his own. And then, of course, the time when Jesus was in such anguish that his sweat was like drops of blood. Well, that took place in the Garden of Gethsemane. There are several other instances where we hear of Jesus withdrawing to a mountain by himself or, for instance, being found by his disciples on the other side of a lake. Jesus also used so many illustrations from nature in his teaching, didn't he? He talked about the lilies of the field, faith as small as a mustard seed, the fig tree, the wheat and the tares, the vines being pruned, the sheep and the goats, and so on. And then, of course, there was the miracle of his walking on the water, his stilling of the storm when he was with his disciples in the boat, and the great catch of fish. Jesus liked to spend time with nature. It was somewhere he was drawn to pray. For those who are currently in lockdown in Spain, and even those in a less limited lockdown in the UK, we may have to settle for our gardens, our balconies, the view from our windows even. But lockdown won't last forever. 
Let's remember that the natural world is a gift from God and something to be treasured and respected and something to go to in times of trouble. Psalm 21, 121 says, I lift my eyes to the hill. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen.